if you notice that sales of hybrid vehicles are going up, there's two main types to choose from. Your plug-in hybrid, a PHEV or a FEV, and a hybrid electric vehicle. The older generation of Prius, for example, was just a hybrid vehicle. What are the differences between plug-in hybrids and hybrid vehicles? What would be the most suitable car for you to choose for your needs? And let's just discuss some of the pros and cons of choosing a hybrid vehicle. It's a decision that a lot of motorists are facing with the rising fuel cost. The governments around the world seem to be stacked against driving a combustion engine in most areas. Taxation is increasing, fuel prices are increasing, and a lot of people are just looking for alternatives, but they don't want to fully commit to an electric. There are some people that electrics are really suitable for, and you'd be daft not to get one. But for a lot of people, going all electric has a set of complications and additional costs. We'll discuss in another video the nuances of going full electric, but we're just going to focus on hybrid because a lot of people that watch this channel are thinking about changing their car and maybe some of these hybrids are now coming onto the market in their price range so they're starting to look at it. Well hybrid is a nice halfway house between a full electric vehicle and a combustion engine vehicle. The range that you would get in a hybrid vehicle is much lower than that of an electric car which makes sense. You're not relying on that all of the time. You've still got a combustion engine there. The range on most hybrid vehicles is about 30 to 40 miles although some of the new models coming out can reach about 90 miles of range on their hybrid battery. Because the hybrid battery is smaller than a conventional electric car battery, the replacement cost is lower. Lifespan is often cited as a worry and because hybrids have been around a long time there's a lot more data that we can draw on with regard to the lifespan of these hybrid batteries and they do seem to be lasting extremely well. Minimal degradation and wear and tear on examples that have got 150, 200,000 miles on and some of these cars and batteries are over 10, 15 years old now and they're still holding their own. So manufacturers have gone a long way to maximize the lifespan of the battery with careful management of the charge and discharge cycles. But what are the basic differences between your plug-in hybrid and a conventional hybrid? Well, the plug-in bit obviously means you can plug it in. So you can plug it into your mains charger at home or a charge network when you're out and about, and you can top up the battery. That really extends the scope of using electric only power much more. And cars with this plug-in option are quoting miles per gallon figures of about 240, 250, sometimes even 300 miles to the gallon. Now, obviously that is going to depend on the range of the battery and how long you measure it. If you go outside the range of the battery, you're stuck with whatever the MPG is of the combustion engine that they've chosen to attach to your car. The conventional hybrid electric vehicle doesn't have the option to plug in. So where does it get the power from? Well, it recovers power. So just as an alternator in a car will charge up while you're driving along, the engine will provide some power to the battery. So the battery is just being topped up a little bit as you drive along. That's just a natural way that things work. Work. But the really clever stuff happens when you brake or when you lift off the throttle because the electric motor is not just going to drive the wheels, it also will act as a generator and draw power out of the kinetic motion of the car and dump that back into the battery. So in stop-start traffic, hybrids are extremely effective. They're very good at capturing the energy that is lost through braking and storing that power in the battery, but it's not 100%. You're never going to recover all of the energy the laws of thermodynamics come into play here and you are going to lose some power when you're just converting it from one state to another. No system is 100% efficient and effective. And the plug-in hybrids also have that option. They will recoup and regenerate power whenever they get the opportunity, whenever you're driving along, whenever you're braking, easing off the throttle. And a lot of cars allow you to control how aggressive the system is at recouping energy. There are instances where maybe it's too too aggressive and you're wanting to roll down a hill under the momentum of the car but your hybrid system is taking too much energy from the car and its motion and it's 
starting to arrest that motion. So you then need to use the throttle. There is generally a bit of a con when it comes to hybrid vehicles. And that is the fact that you've got a battery system stuck in there somewhere. And most manufacturers have made some sacrifices to get that battery fitted. So in some instances, they've reduced the size of the fuel tank. I kind of don't mind that so much. We rarely have to top our cars up more than, say, once a week. And maybe with these smaller tanks, you have to top it up a little bit more regularly. You get sort of one or two days less range out of the fuel tank. And you're also gaining a little bit of range from the battery itself. But a lot of manufacturers have also taken out the spare tyre. How do you feel about driving a car without a decent spare? In some people's minds, it was bad enough having a space saver tyre. But even the space saver tyres are being ripped out now. And manufacturers are providing puncture repair kits that seal the puncture filled tyre with foam and gunk and allow you to limp home and get that tyre replaced. The cost of buying one of these is much higher than a conventional engine, probably because because there's more demand for these. People who don't want to go full electric are now looking at this halfway house that seems to be a sensible option. Another downside to hybrids that people have made me aware of is problems getting insurance. We've had a lot of insurers refuse to continue cover after the renewal day, after people have changed their car to a hybrid. There are various reasons cited for this. Some insurers say it's an increased theft risk. So I think it's probably more down to the keyless entry systems which make cars easier to steal than the actual fact that it's a hybrid and other insurers just don't like the risk of having a car with extensive batteries some might cite there is a, a risk of fire or explosion from those batteries it's probably just down to the fact that there's insufficient data out there for them to work from and insurance companies being what they are are hedging their bets and being extremely cautious which is making it very difficult to get quotes if we are thinking of getting a hybrid vehicle, it's certainly worth just investigating the insurance cost. Firstly, to make sure that our existing insurer can take it on and that they'll be happy to continue cover after the renewal comes up, but also that the prices you get for the hybrid are comparable to those of a non-hybrid. And it will certainly vary a lot depending on the area that you live in and the type of hybrid car that you buy. Don't get caught out. Don't just sign up to a hybrid assuming everything is going to be the same as it was before. You're in a different ballpark when it comes to insurance. So things are going to be probably a lot more expensive for you. But ask the question before you jump in and commit. You need to manage your expectations as well. You may think you'll be able to do a lot of driving under electric only power, but the reality is the electric only power will not be available to you all the time. Depending on how heavy you are with the throttle, what the state of discharge is on the battery and what other systems you've got running. Are you running the air conditioning on full in summer, for example? Have you got all the heating on because it is winter and you need to reduce the mist that's building up on the windows? All of these things will have a bearing on the overall car and how it can manage the electric power available to it. It may well start kicking in the combustion engines. It's certainly not going to be a mini electric car that you can can drive for 30 or 40 miles on electric only power in most cases. Please let me know what your experience has been with hybrid vehicles. There's also a few other things to watch for. The 12 volt batteries have generally been under spec in a lot of cases. And we see a lot of people running those 12 volt batteries down and getting into problems just because they leave it a long time between driving it. So in a lot of cases, it's about two weeks you'll get out of a 12 volt battery while the car is sitting there. Any longer than that, and you need to top it up or manufacturers recommend a trickle charger. That's something that we need to be aware of if we're thinking of buying a hybrid vehicle. The batteries fitted to these hybrid vehicles will generally last easily 10 to 15 years. We see them covering 100 to 150,000 miles with minimal degradation. It's always worth getting a proper battery condition test when you're buying a car. There's always going to be exceptions to the rule. But generally speaking, the system is very well designed, very well built and should last the length of the car. Replacement batteries or repairs to the battery in hybrid vehicles is much lower because it's a smaller battery. So the overall repair cost or replacement cost is generally between £1,000 and £3,000. That's less than half the cost 
of the equivalent repair on a fully electric vehicle. In some cases, you often only replace the damaged cells or the damaged components of the battery, which keeps the overall cost down. For a lot of people, the resistance in their mind to going full electric is the cost of battery replacement when it actually gets to its end of life and how long they've got with the car until that end of life period. So the hybrid option is a way of testing the water to see how you get on with this setup. Please let me know in the comments what you think will you be going to a hybrid a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle or have you been thinking about going fully electric some people have commented already that they've got a full electric car for short journeys around the town and they've retained a nice fun to drive internal combustion engine vehicle for the weekends for the longer drives for when they go on holiday and they need the range that an electric car just can't give them without having to be recharged at intervals so thanks for watching please boot the like button if you found this video useful if you haven't subscribed to the channel please do so we'd hate you to miss out on the great content that we've got planned and lined up for you and speaking of great content you'll find this video interesting and this playlist as well thanks for watching see you in this next video